All right, guys. It's finally happened. Years in finally. the making. Years in the Years making. Years in the making. From 2023 to now. Uh, and everyone's saying, oh, Gaz, get the prism. Can't wait for Gaz to play the prism. I can't wait for his brain to melt from the prism. We've just unlocked the prism and we're oh, about is that to what do we're it doing today? Yeah, that's what is we're it, doing Is today. the prism ready to unlock? It is it? It is. Uh, it is. And you have been annoying me all week about, can we just open it? Can I just open it? Yeah, can I? And now we can bit. finally open it. Just the tiny little, that's the peak. Just yeah. the teensy peak. Yeah. Yep. Any yep. guesses Sorry. as to what maybe just a little shtick about it is? Uh, I have no idea. I'm going to guess it's a robot that shoots lasers around. Okay. Is there something you're hoping for? Uh, a robot that shoots lasers around. Perfect. Rip like, that open. would be cool. How cool would it be if I was a robot that shoots lasers? Oh, you'd be a big right. with lasers. All right, let's start with, I reckon we can work out a lot from the mini. Okay. All right, let's see. And this is going to be terrible for camera, but uh, I'll enjoy it. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's a robot. It's and a it robot. looks like I've got lasers. Really? I don't know how well that's going to come up, but. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, it does. Okay, so it kind of looks sort of like a silhouette. Yeah, it kind of looks like a. Ro it's a robot, but it kind of looks like it's got uh, blades, like uh, you know, in the Protoss in Starcraft. Yeah, the yeah, Zella. yeah. You have that, oh. those little hand blades. Yeah. yeah. So it actually well, doesn't. That's... Does that mean it doesn't look like any of the monsters that we fought? No, it doesn't actually. Because I mean, like all the robots we fought, other than the ruined machines, they all uh weird kind of big roboty things this is, looks like an agile robot like a bipedal yeah and it looks okay. like it's got a jetpack as well oh jetpack i know, I know. rocketeer oh, i reckon all right so now we're we're doing it right. we're doing it all right and, and, but once you open that that's yours you have to play it no matter how terrible it is you realize that 100 percent. i was gonna play it anyway yeah 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 it's i hope everyone stuff. out there has trolled the crap out of you because it'll be troll of the century it would, it would. All right, so what do I pull out first? Oh, God, there's fucking... Oh, shit, there's... That, I remember handing it to you when you left, and I was just like, this thing's really heavy. Like, this is... Two boards. For days. Wow. Okay, oh, okay, so the name of the character is mm -hmm. Unfettered Hive. Oh, Hive. Okay, okay. I think it's an okay. Unfettered so... Five. Like, it was a I... boy band or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I feel like that's a missed opportunity for, for naming a character now. Yeah, so the Hive. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. That's the, the cards. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I'm getting um, I'm getting B um, kind of vibes, and I already played the Geminate, so I think I'm um, already qualified for this. So I'm bringing this uh, up now in the um, Gloom Heaven card viewer thing, and it's showing me now uh, the artwork and everything for it, which is actually very cool. It looks very, um, I don't know, Gundam or very anime. It really looks like it's from a completely different game. I'm just yeah, saying that. Yeah, I'm just looking at that now. It does. Uh, so it doesn't look like a robot with lasers. Uh, it looks like a robot with sparkly uh, gems and cool side blades. Yeah, so right. uh, yeah, yeah, Gundam is, is, the, uh, is the thing. So uh, should I read out everything? Uh, I'll start with maybe the health and the um the cards. Uh, okay. Sorry, card uh, limit, hand limit, things yeah, like that. Yeah, right. So eleven hand limit, That's which good. is good. Yeah, That's we like that. Increased from my last one, we love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, like four it's... or three more than marks. Oh, I t <laughs> no, he's got nine, doesn't he? Oh, I, thought he was, I thought it was eight. Oh, I don't know anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, health wise, uh, drift to health. Um, I don't know what that means anymore. It's it's not drift to health, but it's all it's our version of drift to health. Yeah, medium. Ah, uh, medium. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, just uh, just seeing this and flicking on the back. Complexity five. Okay, you like that? All right. Yeah. So this is probably where the comments of melting my brain or melting people's brains, not mine specifically. Yep. Um, and element elemental affinities none. Yay! Be serious. Yay. Yeah. It actually has none. It says none. Yeah. What? Come on, we need more like elemental affinities. Nah. And nah, I'm I'm sick of dealing with elements. So that's well, it's not even hard then. Uh, yeah, that's it. It couldn't possibly be hard if it doesn't use elements, right? No. Uh, so the keywords: armored, educated, and resourceful. I am basically like a drifter. I'm like an armored drifter. You are. I don't think the drifter was uh, educated, but yeah, definitely. Okay. I think no, the drifter was resourceful. Yeah, it was definitely resourceful. Yeah, 100%. I'm like a blink blade cross drifter cross banner spear. There you go. Sounds really fun. Oh, yeah, I know. How good. All right, cool. Let's let's get into the. Uh, uh, what do you do? Bit. At the start of each scenario, ooh, I'm already excited, <laughs> right? Okay, yeah. 
Place, play one card from your hand to perform its summon action and place a mode token on it. Oh, so that's why you had so many standees just then when you were showing oh, it. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, am I going to be a summon? Oh, I've never played a summon character before. You have. Your okay. banner spears got summons on it. You were learning how to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, okay. And put a mode token on it, okay? And a mode token is highlighted in yellow, so I assume that's going to be important. Okay, it's on the right, yeah. This does not create a summon but instead determines your mode. Oh, okay. you're like a transformer. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right. A set of effects written under the summon stat that apply to you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any additional summon actions performed summon allies as normal and do not have the their mode text applied to you. Okay. So mode text is a little like robot code picture thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, you cannot remove a mode, the card with your mode token on it, from your active area. Okay, so I'm getting the idea at the start of the thing. I'm picking one of the, my summons that has a mode thing, and that's the mode that I'm in for that scenario. Which enhances the stat of some kind or a different way that you play. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool, already cool. very cool. It does sound very cool, yep. Okay, you have a special optional ability called transfer, and it's got a little mode symbol. When transfer is performed and you have at least one summon on the map, choose one of your summons and do the following. Remove the summon from the map, remove all damage and conditions on the summon, and you suffer that damage and gain those conditions. Uh -huh. Teleport to the hex the summon occupied. Move the mode wow. token onto your card of the... Move... Move the mode token. Sorry, reading apparently is the yeah, most yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. Uh, move the mode token on your oh, card. Okay, that hive card? The mode card. The, oh, the mode card, yeah. To the summon, making you that your new mode. Yeah, okay, okay, place the summon of your previous in the hex you occupied. In this way, the chosen summon becomes your new mode and your previous mode becomes the summon. Okay, do not change the card order in your active area, which determines the order of your summons. Okay, so basically that's the instructions on how to become change modes. Yeah, what well, like I'm understanding is so you're going to have a legion of robots out there or summons out there and you actively will switch by teleporting in between them to activate whichever one. So you've got your standard AI from what I understand your, your pets will naturally do, but then you can be like, I don't know, it's like a weird AI thing where you're, little, you're a little chip and you fly into the next one activated and that's mm. now you. While the oh, other like one... Like Agent Smith in the Matrix. Yeah, 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 kind of like that. Any... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, I can see. I can see. Yeah, that sounds awesome. It actually sounds really cool. Uh, okay, I think that's all that's really on here other than uh, we won't read through the, the flavor stuff. Mm. Uh, do you want me to do talents, the thingies first, or do you want me to do cards? I'll do cards. All right, so. Uh, level, let's, one. level one. Um, how do I go back to ability cards? All right. Uh, I need to zoom in. Cool. Aimed assault. Okay, so we're probably going to have to evaluate these as uh, being a mode as well, right? Like, this isn't just a summon. This is, like, uh, giving me abilities. Okay. Okay. All right. Aimed assault. Summon a sniper turret. Perfect. So three health. Uh, oh, yeah. this is where I get to work out how summons work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means three health, uh, guys. Okay, cool. Not and that no legs. Three. No legs. Oh, it's got no legs. All yeah. right. Um, attack two, range four. Okay, so it's summoning a tyrant. And the mode of this one is all your single target melee attack abilities have plus two range. Okay. Plus add one to all your move abilities. Okay. Right. Cool. So make sure I get the language right because that is mode. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm just going to call that like the mode bonus or the mode token, right? Yeah. Uh, cool. So if I play that one, all my uh, melee attacks get range two and mm -hmm. I get plus one move. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the bottom of it so is if, the, if that is your active mode, like Correct. yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, and yeah. that, that, and that oh, is yes. one that you can play at the start before the scenario starts or something like that. Yeah, because you can play any of the summons, right? Yeah. So okay, cool, cool. Uh, and then the bottom of that is uh, attack one, range four. So oh, that's cool. really strong. Attack. <laughs> it's not, but anyway, uh, yeah, very cool. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Next one. Uh, coiled limbs. Summon leaper. Okay. Oh, that's his seven legs. <laughs> uh, so seven health. Yeah. Uh, 
move five with jump. Yeah, wow. Okay, one shield, focus the enemy furthest from the hive. Okay, so it's a bit of Beyblade action. Right. Okay, it leaps to whatever the... F- okay, yep, it's got to focus and it's always the furthest away. Wow, that's, so that's a really cool, weird way. If you can't grant abilities, this thing's going to be like, I'm going to go over here. Mate, uh, boss, I'm your option over here if you want to swap to me right now because I'm all the way over here next to this threat, um, yep. which that should be really interesting. Yeah, and it, with the switching, I take the damage that were on them and mm. the conditions. So mm. my... I have to try and keep him alive, but also understand that if I switch over to it, I could neck myself. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, that's cool. Uh, and so the mode ability for this one is all move. I jump to all your move abilities. I want that. So yeah, nice. Jump forever. Cool. And the bottom of this card is a jump four. So I feel like that's going to be a good card regardless. Yeah. And actually some late initiatives there, which is actually really cool. Yeah. Going late. I mean, I was thinking about this, right? Going late and going early are fine because you play a random. It's when you have to go in the middle yes. that it sucks. Because yeah. you yeah. go, I'm going to go at 50. I have no idea because everything's probably going to be not where I want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, next one. Faceless Entity. Uh, attack two, and then that's the transfer. Sing- sing- uh, so that's what lets you swap. Yeah, I think that I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I'll just make sure this, right, so we don't get uh, heaps of rules clarifications. Uh, you have a special optional ability called transfer. Okay, now it says optional, which is good. Okay. It means I don't have to do it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That's cool. Uh, so, and I probably should read Dwarf's FAQ because he'll like be a heaps of cards. Yeah, I'll get it wrong. He'll be like, did you read the FAQ? Yeah, like, yeah, no. Yeah. I just waited for you to correct me. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So this is like one of the options. You can attack, transfer, and then attack. Yeah. Which is interesting because I... Appear- from the new spot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or the bottom is move, transfer, move. So again, that's like, imagine we're doing an escape one and I've got old legs robot um, who's jumped it really far and then I move two and then transfer and then get to move two. So mm. yeah, okay, okay. So the, again, if any of these interactions don't work, uh, I will figure that out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a 12 as well. That's that's really good. And I noticed, I like how the top and the bottom are actually the same. Um, just movement and, and attacking. And you yeah. get two of them as well. You're not going to have any movement issues at all from what I've already seen with these three cards. It seems like it, yeah. And I, I'm going to guess that the transfer ability is going to be pretty crucial. So I'm assuming something like this is going to be it a must It gives a slight hint of Gemini vibes with the switching forms, right? But nowhere near as restrictive on paper that I can see. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't like just lose, insta-lose if you've planned yeah. to turn wrong, right? Well, we so, don't know yeah. that, but yeah. Well, yeah, true, true. Uh, all right. Uh, high impact projectiles. Uh, so attack two, targeting two, range three. That's okay. fine for a range attack, I guess. Uh, grant two of your summons, move three with nice. jump. Okay, so move everything around. And good initiative as well. Yeah, yep. Okay. And I guess that's, that's the example, right? Like you play the bottom of this with the top of faceless entity. You go at a 12, I move two of my things, and then I get to attack and switch places with one of them. What I'm liking about this so far, just from the four cards that we've seen, is that it's not like walls of text and complications right now. They're quite clean and easy. It's just how you're going to use them with the positioning of where your pets are going to be. That's going to be your puzzle. And that's yep. very cool. It's it's a whole other way of looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's not a, like complex cards. It's more the complexity is like making everything work on the battlefield. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Next card, uh, Hunter Killer. Summon Jackal Mech. Oh, that sounds cool. It does. All right, so it's got four health, moves three, attack two, uh, uh, wounds, and it's got retaliate one. Mm. Okay. Uh, so the mode ability on that one is at the start of each of your turns, suffer two damage. That's that seems really shit. No, that seems really awesome. Yeah, um, okay. Add plus one to all your melee attacks. Okay. Uh, so you're a little Nova? Is it like a little Blink Blade kind of thing? Yeah. Except you get mm. plus one to all your melee attacks? Probably okay, not as broken. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So that's the I'm um, going into damage mode. Got you. Cool. Um, I guess the thing is as well with these, though, I mean, there's going to be other transfer cards, so you could probably stack them. So you could transfer, unless it says once per round. Uh, no, it doesn't say. Well, again, I'll check. But potentially switch into this, do some attacks, with a bonus and then switch out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, all right. Uh, and the bottom I, I, is well, a... Actually, actually, just just on that Hunter Killer, um, mm. 
when you transfer into it mid turn, so let's say you use Faceless Entity, you do your attack wherever you are, you go to it mid turn, you actually miss out on that two, that two damage because that's the start mm. of your turn. So that's a way of avoiding it is jumping in and out of it, but not necessarily at the start of your turn. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm thinking, I'm seeing that maybe there's some combo stuff there. It's mm. like not picking a robot and being that robot for the scenario. It's picking one to start with, yeah. sending things out, maneuvering them around, jumping in between, like uh, almost, yeah, like blinking around kind of. Yeah, because if you stay as one, I mean, there's your drawback right there. Mm. But the other thing as well is that he- it basically heals them when I jump into them. Yes. Because I take I take the damage, so that's another way that yeah, and then they switch spots. Mm, interesting. Yeah, but uh, so the, you are currently our healer as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a future um, us problem. We will work out how to uh, address that. So the media heals, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at the bottom of that hunter killer card is move to attack one. An attack on a bottom with a move is is pretty good still. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so and oh yeah, again they gotta uh, like this is where all this is gonna come into play. Like for example, if I've got the aim to salt the, the sniper turret mode in, that's adding plus one to all my moves, and it's also giving me range to all my melee attacks. It's adding minus so one had to that, all your moves. <laughs> Oh, minus one. Oh, I thought You're it was plus one. It's a turret. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. So back, yeah, okay, that's true. I was like, that seems weird for a turret, but sure, I had minus one. All right, cool, cool. Uh, so that's shit combo because it makes it move one. But it does make it a move one attack range three, right? Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, cool. Cool. Thanks for picking me up on that because I'm sure right. that'll get corrected the first time I talked about it. Yeah. Uh, all right, interference. Uh, so transfer. And then heal to self. Um, nice. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer a damage. Great. Really? A little bit of that Geminate really? action. They all love that. Wow. It's fucking Bring back. back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and then the bottom is move to, and here's our wall of text. All enemies that the target... Let's start again. Move to. All enemies that target one of your adjacent summons with an attack this round target you with the attack instead, regardless of range or line of sight. Ah, here we go. So this is like a protect thing. So I play that, and then I'm going to be the focus. So that's really cool. Well, that's... Not, I don't think. I don't think. It, I don't necessarily think it's the focus, but for the sounds of it, it just sounds like regardless of where you are at, you're just going to take the damage, even if they technically can't reach you personally. So all it is with that target one of your adjacent summons with an attack this round. Target you. Oh, I suppose you have to be adjacent, so that would be quite easy to do it. In the yeah. traditional way, anyway. Regardless of range or line of sight. Okay, so this is just thinking if, say, I'm in a space next to my summon, one of my robots, and then the monster is in the hex next to that, right? So it's not actually adjacent to me. I play this, rega- even though it's not in melee range to me, it would hit the robot, but then that would go to me. Yeah, okay. That's, that's why I'm reading. Yeah, okay. So you can kind of just, if you can get this out before they attack, you can protect one of your summons, which is mm. which cool. We haven't really seen that with any of the summon classes, like the ability just to say, I'm having everything, right? The the spoiler for one of the characters I re- most recently played <laughs> had a pet yeah. on it, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are, yeah, so there were small ways of doing that. But um, again, yeah, yeah, that makes that, yeah, you are right. So, okay, cool. Uh, and there's a little bit of healing there, which is good. We like mm-hmm. a bit of healing. Mm-hmm. Uh, launch pod. All right, here's where the jetpack comes in. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I think so. It must be. Attack, uh, three, attack range three, three yeah. range three. That's a jetpack right there. That's a j- totally jetpack, right? Uh, play one card from your hand to perform a summon action of the card as if you were occupying a hex occupied by the target of the attack ability. Okay, so it's just summons next to him. What I hit, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yep. Play one card from your hand to form a summon. But I guess that's that's like action economy because I'm getting to do an attack and also summon something. That's true. That's true from hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. The only thing that was confusing me was like, you know, as if you were occupying the hex. But I'm like, no, but if you're occupying the hex, you put it adjacent, not the hex where the enemy is. Because if you don't kill the enemy, where the hell are you going to summon it? But it's as if you were occupying the enemy's hex. Um. So, yes, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, okay, cool. And then the bottom is a transfer and heal too. So, again, cool. So, good to see there's a lot of transfers because again i think that's going to be part of the puzzle what are, we've, we're seven cards in i'm liking your you've got some blazingly fast initiatives like some pretty really good ones and then some really nice late ones as well i mean this one's not super late but you don't have any sitting in between the 30s and the 60s you know yeah um, which is so cool all 
All right, plated defense. So here's the tank, right? Got to be summon armored tank. All right, six health. Not that tanky. Uh, two move, two attack, one shield. Okay. And the mode ability is uh, one shield plus add minus one to all your move abilities. Okay, so this is making me slower, but I get a shield. You're a robotic druid. A robotic That's druid. Yeah, yes, you really are. Yes, like you're yeah. just changing into all the different forms like on the fly. Like mm. it's it's very cool to see. Like the ultimate jack of all trades right now, from what I can see. <laughs> I can literally turn into everything. Yeah. yeah, and the bottom of that one is a shield one and retaliate. Uh, now it does go at eighty, so very useless unless you're going to pair this with a fast card. Oh yeah, which you do have. Which you do have. Yes. Yeah. So, um, interesting. I'm um, just jump back to coiled limbs. Mm -hmm. So the summon leaper. How do you read that uh, shield ability there that it has? Uh, kind of shield just... one focus on the enemy furthest from the hive. So it's just... like your your pet when it activates on its turn is going to pick a focus which is going to be the furthest from the hive and do a yep. five jump to it and then it'll have shield one for its turn. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It always has shield one, right? Or yeah. does it only have it? Up? Yeah, yeah. It's just interesting I think so. compared to the tank, which also has shield one. They both have shield one. Mm. But um, yeah, cool. All right. Uh, next card. Prepare for deployment. Okay. Heal self four Ooh. at the top, or complex. the bottom is move four. Yeah, okay. And it's in the middle initiative. Yeah. So there's I your. Don't know. Oh, this is a kind of crab card, but I kind of need to take it though, right? I mean, yeah, I guess. I'm trying to think like the prepare for deployment element is kind of like a heal yourself before you transfer and take all the damage from one of your summons. It gives you an XP. Okay. Well, we've got to take it then, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Got to get them levels. That's right. Okay, cool. Uh, Reaper function. Now, this looks Attack. like your banner spear coming back, by the way. You <laughs> said <laughs> you don't uh, need a friend. I don't need a friend. No. So it's attack two, targeting three next to you, and you get an XP. Uh, that's very reminiscent of a card for another character I played that never got played because the bottom was really important, which I'm going to not mention. Uh, and the bottom of it is a transfer loot one. Yeah, okay. There's, there's my loot. Okay. That's actually really cool because you could transfer to a pet that's near corpses near loot tokens, and then do the loot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's right. it's not right. tied to your current position. That's cool. Yeah, that is really cool, actually. Good pick up. Good and what's pick cool up. about that is generally when you have a pet out, your pets are going to move and, at and attack and do everything before you do, which will always make put them in a better position anyway. And even if there's no loot, I mean, it's still a, a another transfer to save for when you've got an even juicier transfer later. I don't, I don't know. Um, but it just, it's such a basic thing that looks like it can just have, I can see where the brain melts a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, you're right with the comboing of transferring and looting, uh, even things like, and this is where I think the mode on hunter killer becomes in play, like adding plus one to all your melee attacks. So like that becomes an attack three, three targets. So there's a good way of like getting stuck in. So yes. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Annoying initiative at 32, but whatever. Yeah, look, it had to end the streak. Like, Yeah, yep. But don't worry, we're back. Oh. Reconstructive aid has initiative of 90. So uh, summon repair drone. Okay, this sounds cool. Uh, so three health, move two, attack one, range three. So ranged attack of little baby. Pew, pew, pew. At the end of turn perform, heal one, range three. Mm. Okay. You so bet like a healing little banner. It's a repair joint. It is. It's a healing battle, except it doesn't heal everyone. It just uh, heals just one person. I mean, and then if you become it, it will heal you. At the start of each of your turns, perform heal to self. Ah, okay. All your range attacks have minus one. Okay, so this is the, oh, no, we need to go into repair mode. We transfer into the, the drone. We heal up for a bit. And then, yeah, okay, cool. I like it. Yep. I like it. And the bottom of that one is heal three self with regenerate something about that is also it's a repair drone but it's a flyer so it's like a, a flying drone that i can see it's got a fly mm. symbol um so it's not really gonna get potentially stuck which is pretty cool 
That's yeah, it's a good point. And being range three means that it should usually stay behind everyone. True. Like there's a, a good chance uh, that. Uh, you know, again, as long as I control my initiative, that everyone else should move forward. I mean, we've got a fairly melee heavy team at the moment as well. So, uh, cool. Now, now that's all the level one cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're looking at the X's. So these should be just wacky, uh, like off the wall shit, right? Yeah. Just a slight increase in potential difficulty. Yeah. Okay. So reassemble. Uh, we've got transfer. Instead of placing your previous. I assume that's the mode card symbol. Card standee on the map as a summon. Move that card to your discard pile. Okay. Instead of placing the previous... So when you transfer, you, you swap positions and you move your mode token from the pet that you were currently on to the new pet. So instead of placing your previous modes card standee on the map as a summon, move that card to your discard pile. No, I'm not 100% sure what that means. It sounds like a way of pulling the pet off the board. Because are they mandatory? Uh, which which parts? The summons. As in, as in, sorry, when you have a, a pet out, um, like Bone Shaper can just dis dismiss a pet, right? Are yours uh, mandatory? Can they not be dismissed? And this is a way to remove it? Uh, I, may, I imagine they can, but I guess the difference is that they're lost cards, unlike the Bone Shapers, so that you would lose them. Uh... So instead of placing your previous mode card standee on the map as a summon, move that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That, I, I get what, yeah, exactly what you're saying. So the idea is that when you transfer, um, you take the summon off the map, you go into its spot, you exchange, you take its damage, but it stays on the map, but back where you were, right? Because you're swapping places. Yeah. So this one basically does that, but instead of it going back, you take it off and the card goes to your discard pile. Got you, so got you. It you doesn't burn it the pet. It doesn't. Yeah. If any of these pets die, they go into your lost pile. Yeah. So when you yep. swap to either help yourself get out of position because you're worried that you're going to die or that um, your pet over there is going to die, like a venge swap, um, you didn't go to where your pet is and the previous one is now going to get booked, but not anymore because of this card. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's, I mean, with something like the repair drone, right? It's basically going to be range three away from stuff. If, I'm in combat and I don't want to be in combat anymore. I can switch out, play this so that it doesn't just get wrecked by everything. Yeah. So, okay, cool, cool. That makes sense. Uh, that was uh, interesting to work through. Uh, play one card from your lost pile to perform a summon <laughs> action of that card. And that fixes the other part, right? There we go. Oh, okay, so this is an absolute I must take. This is basically play a summon that has already died. Yes. Uh, you also get to transfer and you get to move. And this is one of those, you can't pick back up cards. So yep. you can't abuse this um, and keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. But that's awesome. Again, this is the solving part of the problem. I remember with Gloomhaven and some of the summons is once they're dead, they're dead. Well, that was going to be a question for you. I was going to be like, if you lose 50, 60% of your pets, how useless are you going to be? Uh, move to attack to. <laughs> yeah, yes. So, I mean, I'll still always have my mode, right? Like, true, true. Because I always have to have a mode. But, it, but unfortunately, what if you're stuck I get... in, as a turret, <laughs> then you can't well, move anymore. Worse. Imagine if I was stuck as the jackal mech, the hunter killer one. At the start of my turn, suffered true damage, and I had nothing else to transfer <laughs> yeah, into. Okay. I'm just like, oh guys, I'm I'm dying here. Can you please save me? Yeah. Uh, Cool. Uh, the next one, remote control, grant one of your summons attack one. No, plus one attack, sorry, plus one attack. Um, or grant one of your summons plus one move. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, evaluating thing, it's mid-tier initiative as well. Mm. Uh, that doesn't seem great. It, it, it doesn't, but you have to remember at the start of any given turn, all your pets are going to activate in order. That's already a crap load of things going on from the attacks that are happening, the ranged attacks that are happening, the, all that kind of stuff. The one, you're, not, you're not controlling them. They're just your nat standard summon activations. So there are going to be times, I mean, that's already kind of busted that all your pets are doing. And then, and then you've got all these basic cards that are going to be doing something on your turn, whether it be swapping between them or doing an attack yourself. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is just, yeah, just a reminder that if they give you too many bonkers cards that aren't to do with your pets, it's pretty busted. Yeah, true. I just, I'm trying to work out how this, like, so this is, that's not attack one, right? That's a, like, as in plus one to their attack. No, it's grant one of your summons and attack and add one to it. 
Oh, okay. That makes heaps more sense. Because yeah. I was like, but they're going to go before me. How yeah. is giving them plus one attack? They're going to attack twice. Good. And the second time is going to be slightly okay. better. Yes. Thank you. So this is why. This is why uh, I need you to help me <laughs> understand right. how summons work. Right? Uh, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, that seems really good. That seems really good then. Yes. Yep. Yep. So move with plus one or attack with plus one. Yep. I love it. Uh, okay. Shocking pulse. Oh, here we go. We've got a Tesla coil. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Summon arcing generator. Uh-huh. Okay, so it's a health five, move four, attack two, um, melee. Uh, target all adjacent enemies with pierce two. Oh, nice. Okay. So, hang on. Target all adjacent enemies. Oh, so that means its attacks attack everyone around it. Yes. Is that right? Okay. I think all right, so. Makes... I think so. Yeah, yeah. That, okay, that, cool. that, that might be an FAQ thing. It might be, It's probably there just to clarify that, but that's how I'm reading it. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then the mode is add minus one attack. Ooh, that sounds yuck. Uh, add five pierce to all your attacks. Uh, pierce five is cool, but minus one attack is not cool. Yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah. Uh, but no, again, like this is, your, this is your mode jumping in and out, right? Like you throw this one forward and then you jump into it. So pierce attacks uh, and then, yeah, you go from there. Yeah. Uh, cool. And the bottom is muddle everything within range one. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer damage. Yes. Okay, so that's a bottom and there's a top. So I can, if I just sit around our team, I can deal one damage to everyone and then deal one damage to everyone. Mm, awesome. Yeah. That's cool. really looking forward to that. Yep. So how many uh, socks do you have? You've got one well, per card. I've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got five cards that let you swap in between stuff. Okay. Mm, okay, and that, that's pretty good out of the starter. How many cards are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 5 out of the 14. So roughly like, you know, 30% of the cards uh, yeah. giving me the option of swapping. So, yeah, it does seem, it seems like it's going to be way more core to eking out those really big turns than just a pick a mode and then you might want to transfer one or two times during the, during the game, right? Yeah. This does seem like a, you know, that's going to be kind of the key to, to bouncing, um, pumping up the damage. Three, three, uh, so that's the end of the level one and X cards, uh, so if I you, guess. If you, if you talk all six, you currently have six pets, six robots, standees. So if you somehow manage to get all six out at once, well, that's A, probably going to book your stamina um, just because you've got no cards left. Uh, but still, like maybe maybe three or four out at any given time. That's that's pretty insane with the amount of, you know, you can attack two there and attack two there uh, and attack one with a bit of heal, um, you know, the shocking pulse one. But at the same time, um, that's going to be kind of scary to keep everything alive and keep an eye on everything that's happening at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm envisioning... You're going to be stressed. Scenarios. Yeah, I'm envisioning scenarios. Because it, it is, it's going to be stressful for, like, what they pick. The, the enemies, right? Uh, yeah, you, and you will need a hot minute when we reveal the initiatives and the cards come up, you're like, cool, let me just check what that one's doing. Does that affect me? Now that one, does yeah. that affect me? As, oh my God. Okay. And I haven't seen anything so far that is ignore, retaliate. No. Right? So that then becomes this really big issue of you can't stop your summons booking themselves. No. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, all right. So I guess my initial thoughts from just the level one and X cards, yep. uh, this seems really cool. Like a lot of fun. Yep. Like I'm, I'm very, very excited to play around with this and just, I've never played a summoned character. Not, not, I, I played the banner sphere, but that's more throwing down things to like buff around. This is a, the summons are important and they need to interact with the, the monsters and stuff. Uh, and I'm really interested to see how badly I can like mess up transferring between things and getting stuck in the wrong place and just you know just all all kinds of bad i foresee like multiple times there's gonna be you going okay okay i've worked out my turn i think i've got it okay cool i'm gonna do this i'm gonna go to that guy over there i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna look over and go what about your other pet over there that's about to get hit for six and you're like oh and then he just I, I see a lot of that happening where yeah. you think you finally mapped it all out and got it all going and then because you have to activate this is your turn is literally, so that's going to activate, which means that pet's going to go there. That one's going to go there. So I want to swap to that one. Guys, just give me a sec. And then that one's going to, yeah, it's, it's going to be fucked. Yeah, like, you're excitingly right. Excitingly fucked. 
Oh, yeah, totally. You're right, though. That is going to create these situations where I'm going to look and say, uh, even let, let's look at Faceless Entity going at a 12. So I'm going to even assume I'm going first amongst everyone in the monsters. Uh, I'm going to look and go, okay, I'm going to want to transfer into this mon this robot. But I need to work out where that robot's going to be. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't calculate, oh, I want to transfer there now because it's not going to be there. It's going to be somewhere else. Then something like a wolf pulls a six or an eight and goes before me and then they move and then suddenly my robot is either dead or it's not where it wanted it to be and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, I can definitely see uh some oh no, my turn. <laughs> yeah. I can see you you're the you're the power rangers, but all five of them. In fact, <laughs> if I go back and re-roll a certain character and give you this, like what what would that do to your whole lineup? Everything is uh it just becomes flying. That's yeah. right. So uh, cool. Uh, so let's go through the level two and three cards because I think we start at level three, right? Yes. Yeah, cool. cool. We may. We may. May start at level three. Mm. Uh, force field. Okay. Sounds, Sounds cool. cool. Sounds cool. It does. Uh, summon dampening unit. Uh, so it's a move five. It's, so it's a summon with a move five. Health five. Health five. Move two. Attack one. Range two. Okay. All adjacent allies gain one shield. Hey. Ah, there we go. We've got an updated weedy. <laughs> uh, oh, I wonder, do you reckon I can just fudge the rules a bit and just take over weedy? Maybe. Like... <laughs> yeah, we'll keep you in the stables. Uh, so, and then the mode ability for this one is gain two shield for the first attack that damages you each round. Okay, cool. That's that's pretty cool. Mm, I like the it. bottom of that also is a move five. Yeah, okay. Which is Which is decent. All right, cool. Uh, the next one. Just so now, uh, I, now we're in. Yeah, I just in a quick second. The mode swapping thing. Do you need range of any of that? Or there's no range line of sight or anything like that. You can just do it. Uh, no, it just says choose one on the map. Okay. Um, so nice. When transfer is performed and you have at least one summon on the map, choose one of your summons and do the following. Yeah. And because it's teleport, so yeah, it just switches. Yeah, I'm just curious about when when we're talking about the move five. It's like how important is a move five? Because your pet's kind of always going to be moving, and transfer is like a teleport in between them all. Yeah. So I'm curious about how much you how desperate is a move five? But I don't know. We'll have to see it in action, and it'll probably make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the other level two card. Now we're in decision mode, which sucks, right? Because we've got to pick between these yeah. two. Uh, is long range missile. Okay, that sounds cool. Attack three, range five. Okay. It's pretty long range. It's that's very long range. Um, when one of your summons would suffer damage, you may instead suffer that amount of damage minus one. Transfer with that summon, discard this card, and gain one XP. Oh, so it's a permanent card for the round. No, no. Yeah, it's got the it's infinity got symbol. It. Oh, okay. Oh, is that? The round oh, card okay. is the just a circle. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I was, I, I always look for the lost card on um infinity. Okay, so you play it, and this next time one of my things suffers damage, yeah, I suffer that minus one, yeah. and then I transfer into that summon, but then the card gets discarded. Got you. So it can sit there as a sa uh, a safe fail safe kind of thing. Uh, and it's funny because that's in that's a transfer out of cycle. Yes, right. Because that's, that's true. transferring not on my turn. Yeah. Uh, which is again interesting, and I can see that being really annoying, right? Like I'm gonna plan my turn around it, and then say a chaos demon pulls a one, yeah, and then they go first, and they run up and just punch a robot, and suddenly I'm over there. Yeah, like I'm like I didn't want to. Although it says transfer with that summon, transfer is optional. I wonder if that's kind of telling me that that's not optional, right? The card is optional. Isn't it? Is it? Whenever one of your summons would suffer thing, you may suffer that amount of damage. One transfer with that summon, discard the card. Okay, the may is before a period. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So the may component is to do the rest of it. Yeah. So as in, I I can choose not to trigger that card, but if I do trigger it, then I have to do the transfer. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of go, no, no, no. Okay, that's that's better then. So it's not just the first thing that gets punched. I just turn into. Yeah. You can use it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That makes sense. Again, I'll read the FAQ. I'm sure there's many questions on this. Yeah. Uh, this character. So, uh, cool. Uh, level three. Uh, sorry, I guess to start with, what I'm probably thinking is I don't know, uh, having a mobile shield sounds really cool. Uh, Aren't you bought shields by now? 
a little bit. Yeah, you would be. A little bit, yeah. yeah so I, I feel like having some cool long-range missiles and uh, some insta-swap shenanigans sounds uh, probably more. The utility. I think the utility sounds better. Everyone it's, else it's just been more fun. You've always got a bit more of a safe option, at least lately, in the last six months or so. Um, a bit more of a conservative and all that kind of stuff. Just get wild. Just go out there yeah. and just be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're full, like, gun mode. Yeah. Uh, all right. Level three cards are hijack, transfer, grant the summon placed by the transfer ability uh, an attack. Yeah, okay. So this is that that thing where they get an attack plus one. Mm. So you swap, and then the one that you swapped from, the position you swapped, um, that thing gets to immediately hit wherever you swap from. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, that makes sense. That's mm. pretty cool. Uh, and then, uh, and I guess I see that working well if I have, like, kind of damaged characters out, right? So, for example, with the, uh, where was he? The Jackal. He seems, uh, that's, that's not really a DPS one. I haven't really, there hasn't really been a DPS pet. They all seem to be kind of only one or two attack. Yeah. So, I mean, mate, I assume that'll come later, but like, yeah, Potentially, one of those things. But giving you a, like a pet that's going to hit for four or something like that would probably be, um, it would definitely be later if it was a thing, but yeah, yeah. again, it's like, if you had three of these out, uh, aimed assault, coiled limbs and the jackal, I mean, that's five damage before you've even had a turn. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, cool. And then the bottom is control one enemy within range four, move one, attack two. Ooh, that's range spicy. Four, move one, attack two. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's not a loss. So it like will hit. It's it's like a mind sniffer. Yeah. That's really cool. Oh, that's really cool. Do you use your deck or their deck? The monster oh, I deck. I'd have to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that I wasn't too I, sure. The cool thing with stuff like that, I, I know from playing one of the characters in Gloomhaven, is you dead. get the trigger triggers um, retaliate, right? So oh. I get a wolf to hit its wolf mate, uh, and then it gets retaliated on, or whatever has retaliate. So um, it kind of you do damage to both of them. Yeah, what's cool about that is it's a two pronged effect because it sets up other people as well. If I want someone, you know, if I want you to put something in a certain type of terrain that may or may not damage them as well as next to something else. You can do that. You can hit something else. And then I'll be like, thank you. Now it's in the perfect position for me. Um, yeah. So, yeah. No, it's really good. Yeah. That is cool. That is a really cool. Um, and range four is decent as well. Like, it's not It's not like I have to be, like, one adjacent enemy or something like mm. that. Like, there, there is a bit of flexibility with that. Just something I'm looking at earlier with some of those earlier cards, with some of the pets. Some of them are really quite, in, like, enhanceable. Um the actual oh, pet symbols itself. And some of them are, are really not. Like the tyrant itself can only ever add to its health or its range. Um, so you can definitely beef them up a little bit more um, to to do more. Because I'm looking at some of your enhance options. Like that one that says control one enemy within range four, move one. I was like, oh, please have a, a thing on it for a, make it move two. But you can't. Um, and then I was like, oh, what are some of them? What are your options? Mm. But yeah, no, that's cool. Okay, yeah, interesting. Because yeah, you're right, actually. They do, they've got the squares, which means it can add... Add stuff to them, um, mm. and use the enhancer, which is, you know, one of your favorite things to do. Yeah, use the heaps. Uh, all right, and the other level three card, rapid fire. Okay, summon machine bolter. Oh, okay, this sounds cool. Uh, three health, attack two, no movement, range three, attacks two targets. Nice. Okay, nice and simple, like another turret. Uh, and its mode ability is add plus one target to your ranged abilities, wow. ranged attack abilities. Plus, all your range attacks have minus one range. Okay. That's not okay. too bad. So if you become if you become that, I'm looking at like some of your range attacks. Like long range missiles becomes an attack three target two minus one uh, minus one range, which is yep. already quite good. That that's eight that's eight damage right there. Mm. Um, plus anything else you can do. That's that's pretty cool. Where's the uh, high impact projectiles? Uh, mm. that with level one, that becomes an attack three, targeting three. Mm. Uh, it becomes range two, which is tricky, but still, yeah, okay. So it seems uh, what I might have to do, especially looking at this, is, I mean, oh, I suppose I was going to take long range missiles anyway, so that's not that much of a decision. But uh, yeah, okay, cool. 
Uh, and the bottom of that one is move two, grant two, you summons move two. Okay, cool. So that's, uh, I, I'm very familiar with that from Banaspear. Uh, yeah. It's basically, yeah. But um, I was just wondering about that because I was having a quick look at, say, the sniper turret, the first one, or even this this rapid fire machine bolter thing. They don't have movement, right? So they're not moving each turn. So the only way to continue to move them forward is by granting them moves. Yeah. Right. And I mean, giving a move plus one isn't really helpful because they're only going to move one space. Mm. But this at least gets them to move two. Yeah. Um, and talking about enhancements, that little square there at the bottom of rapid fire, if I was going to take that, kind of seems seems pretty good. Mm, interesting. Uh, well, some interesting decisions, even with the level two and three cards, because yeah. I think hijacked for me sounds amazing and heaps of fun. Uh, but the rapid fire, if ever I, if I was going to go ranged, mm. Yeah, like that just sounds like a like a really good card to grab. Yeah, it's like a ranged drifter. Yeah, <laughs> which is really good. You're, you're basically a drifter 2.0. You're a drifter in robot form, but with, <laughs> with pets uh, and no elements. Um, I, I really like all of this um, a lot. I like the simplicity of reading the cards and understanding them. Um, obviously, there's a couple of little weird edge cases that we're going to be a little bit not 100% sure on, but surely it would be easy to clear up. But the the pathing of what's there, of deciding, you know, what to play on the cards and all that doesn't seem too bad. It's just literally on the board about, yeah, that's where you're... you're it's a board maze. Um, the same way that I, I experienced that with, um, you know, previous characters versus the hand maze that other char- other play- players yeah. are playing with. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. And we've talked about this kind of balance about where is your focus? Mm. You know, is your focus on the board? Is your focus on your tableau and your hand, that type of thing? And yeah, this is definitely going to be one of those. The focus is on the board. Like knowing where everything is and where everything's going to go is that's the that's going to be the thing, which which is interesting uh, because, you know, different the different characters in our parties are like have those focus as well. So, all right, uh, let's have a quick look at the traits or the perks sorry mm-hmm. and the masteries all right so let's have a look at the masteries first okay and i knew this was going to be one of them I-, I had a feeling as well actually yeah yeah so transfer each round okay cool yep and then the bottom one sounds real spicy the bottom one sounds not doable now uh yes that yeah i've only got three i reckon because you could do the top and a bottom, and you could do the, the bottom system. of of long range missile, yeah, which gives you a transfer. Well, uh, actu- so actually, you've also um, got a short rest one. Sorry, not jumping the gun there. Oh, is there? Is there a? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. At the end of each of your short rests, you may do that. Okay. Cool. So yeah. So you could do that. You have those two cards. So you do a top and a bottom. You uh, trigger the um, bottom of long range missiles, and you short rest at the end of the round. Yeah. And look, yeah, as you are a mastery king, you have achieved nearly every mastery um, that's been thrown at you relatively easily on multiple classes. So this will be no different. <laughs> I think I just keep getting all the the characters that have like easy ones so mm. uh all right cool uh they sound like fun and not ridiculous either uh so i mean transferring each round sounds tough but we'll just do a boss one where it only takes three rounds right well technically they don't actually sound that tough because like you 100 percent book yourself potentially all you have to do is just play that symbol four times in a round and you can easily line that up how effective you'll be for the whole scenario <laughs> is definitely what's going to be up in the air, right? Where you're like, this is, guys, this is my mastery one. I'm focusing on this. You look after everything else. Please win. All right, be right back. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, the they, bottom, it, the second one seems really doable because it only really books one round. I just set it up. Like, that's super easy to set up. Uh, but the other one is a, yeah, it, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to work to this and hopefully you guys can carry it. Yeah. So. Uh, let's have a look at the perks. We'll skip all the AMD stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it looks like there's some just the normal getting rid of negatives uh, moving around. It does say there is one, though, that replaces and gives you the chance to transfer. Mm. So there's transfer AMD stuff. So that's another, I guess, another way of uh, of doing that. you got Hill Self as well. Pardon? you got Hill Self as, uh, ones as well. Oh, yeah, cool. Now, that's good because I think I'm going to be doing a bit of damage to myself 
by switching. Yeah. Because it's inevitable that someone's going to get hit. So, uh, But, yeah, the transfer one seems interesting. I can see some weird turns with that where you draw it having an extra attack coming up. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, so cool. Uh, two ticker. Whenever you long rest, off. whenever you long rest, you may do so on any initiative value. Oh wow! Choosing your initiative after all ability cards have been revealed, and oh. you decide how your summons perform their abilities for the round. Wow! Whoa! That is must pick. So you can that long is... rest at any stage. Obviously, being able to um, heal yourself for the two before. And that gets your cards back as well for the times that you want to use cards to negate. If they're all in your discard pile, you can... Yeah, that's that's game-breaking. Not necessarily in a in a bad way, but mm. you can't do that, like, in the game. Like, no one yeah. can do that. You're literally... you, but, but not just the initiative part and, like, doing that because you can completely shape it. If it had just been when you're long race, you can do it any initiative. That already seems pretty cool. It does. Right? But the pet thing, right? And, but also... You do it after all the cards have been revealed. Yeah, so true. not before, not be like, oh, I'm going to go out of one. It's like, oh, okay, I can pick where I'm going in here. But because you get to see everything and you decide how your summons perform their abilities, you can go, cool, well, I'm going to make sure they go before some things, after some things, or after certain people. That's really cool. I love that. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. I'm just going to quickly compare that to the one that you currently have. It's a two ticker, and it says, once each scenario during your turn gain two shield for the round. <laughs> Very More different. about that. More about that in my banner spear banner spear review. So oh, that's so good. Uh at the end, this is the next one, uh just to wrap this up. At the end of each of your short rests, you may transfer. Okay, again, really cool. Uh a clutch transfer. There's gonna be times where I'm gonna want to be somewhere else or want to save a summon. It allows me to do do an early rest and kind of switch, which is cool. Uh, and the last one is whenever you would gain wound, prevent that condition. So I'm immune to wound. Which okay. I think is really important um, because you do a lot of things that will damage yourself and um, and all that kind of stuff. I think wound is one thing you definitely don't, just knowing that you don't ha ever have to deal with it. It's kind of like filled with the immobilize. It's just really yeah. handy. Because um, yeah. even even things like immobilize, you couldn't care less. Um, you just swap, right? Oh, that's interesting. I think so. I think just remember the transfer when you transfer things, you take all the conditions of the pet that you transfer as well. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so I still have them, but it's teleport because it says teleport to the hex summon. So mm. immobilize, I don't really care about, I guess, no. in a way because uh, it'll switch. But I couldn't teleport. I couldn't switch with something and then and then move because I'd ha either have their immobilize or my immobilize. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess the other thing as well is that I can use that ability to pull wound off my summons if they get them that's true because wound is probably gonna it's, it would be really bad on summons i imagine because they don't have a heaps of life but does it make it you immune okay yeah you would gain the condition if you swapped yeah so that prevents you from gaining it yeah yeah that's fine yeah so cool but well, uh yeah and the, the rest of them seem seem good for an amd perspective so one of the things that um i wanted to quickly ask you was how do you think you would itemize this character do we get a lot of usage out of like previous bone shaper items like to do with the summons because there's a lot in there right now that we're not using or even looking at uh, yep. which will be really fun yeah this is going to be the first character in a bit that i'm actually gonna go through and look at all the items because mm. playing the two previous characters um in the coral and the banner spear uh, it's been a lot more straightforward in regards to what I wanted to do. Like I had a kind of clear focus of like, well, this is the type of build I want to do. I don't really know with this because I feel like I kind of want to lean into the DPS on this one, right? But you're, at the same point, due. pardon? You're due. Due, yeah. due like to, have, yeah. to have fun, I mean, to, to go in there and do all that kind of stuff. I had, I had, I've had fun on the last two. But yeah, exactly. I, I know what you're saying. It's And it is a case of going, well, how do I... How do I get items to maximize my damage? They're going to synergize with what I want to do really well. But also, I need to be conscious of the summons. Mm. Like, I need to be conscious of one of my summons that's on two HP running up and punching something that's got retaliate. Because, I mean, I probably don't want it to die. And sometimes having, like, the totem that lets you control or bits and pieces like that is, is going to become really important. 
There's one character I can think of right now. It's a base character, starter character that would work so well with you, and you guys would work so well together. What's that? It's the Banner Spear. <laughs> it would actually, right? It would. It would work really well. It'd be like, hey, friend, do you want to move all my people around for me? There's that. There's the heal banner that affects oh, all of your yeah. pets. The damage yeah. one. Like, it's... Uh, cool. I was just like, so how it's... do you enhance all of your guys? Oh, you need an aura ability of some kind. Oh, the banner spear <laughs> does that. And in return, he gets all his formations, right? It's like, fuck. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, you're right. Actually, it's uh, such a, such an interesting conundrum. Considering that's what I'm retiring from. Yep, yep. And we're probably like at any stage, we're the furthest away from seeing that character again, if it was ever going to get played. Yeah, right? it's all so, matter. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Is there anything else to look through? No, not that I can think of. Uh, very no. exciting. So. Yeah, we will see how all this kind of goes. I believe that by the time this happens as well, um, you know, the party lineup and, and you know, we get to see. Do you think you'll do the um, level one? Nope, don't pick a level two or level three card. Uh, look, I think so because I, I like that. I like to get a feel for things. Uh, I just looking at the cards, though, I, I'm i pretty sure I want the utility of long range missile, mostly the bottom. Yeah. Uh, but the range attack is always really good to have in one of those turns where you're like, I can't get in melee range, right? Oh, yeah. Or I need to do a bottom where I'm just sitting still not doing anything. Uh, so that seems really good. And I don't know, Hijack just seems so much fun. Uh, like, they, they both actually, um, yeah, I you agree. Know, like Force Field and Rapid Fire, the, the, problem, the problem I see though, and this is where I don't know, I'm going to have to think about this, that the balance is going to be, I can't just take all, all pets, right? Like I can't, I've got 11 cards. One starts in the game, right? Or I start as one, but you don't place the summon. So I'm technically playing with a 10-card hand, right? Yeah. So a 10-card hand, I haven't played a summon character, but I've played things with persistence. Once you get three or four cards in your active area, your turns get really short, mm. you know? And even if that's the case, if I put, say, three summons out, okay, and, and then obviously I have to play a bottom with those cards as well, Okay, so that's six of my 10 cards played. I now only have two turns until I'm resting, <laughs> right? And then I rest and then I get my cards back. But now I'm playing with seven cards because I've got three summons out. And so that becomes only really three turns, maybe with a, a stamp pot or something, you can get a fourth turn. So then that starts cycling really quickly. Yeah. Uh, and that seems fine. But what I need to be careful of is if I take, for example, force field and rapid fire, I can't play. I can't really play with six or seven robots, right? Because mm. I'd never get them all out. Yeah. So I mean, you, again, you, I, you can depending on how quickly you know the Blink Blade finishes the scenario, and then you get two <laughs> XP, two XP, two XP right at the end as an XP dump, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So look, it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, and I'll have to have a think about it. Uh, because I think you could definitely over. Uh, or, or bring too many summons. Uh, but then again, it also seems like the kind of character you could play where you just go, I'm a summoner, right? Yeah. I'm just going to play summons and I'm just going to move around and manipulate the summons or I'm going to get in there and I'm going to be like blinking around, transferring in, doing cool shit. I feel like that's what I want to do. That, I was going to say, that's really good, a, a good point because they're going to be people, people who unlock this or choose this and then go, oh God, what have I got myself into? I can't wrap my head around the puzzle of moving everything around. Mass summoner, like a shepherd, like whatever. And you can do that. Mm. You can you can play that way where you have all your pets out. It's not going to be as effective or maybe as fun um, as, as blinking around, but some people will like that play style of here's my four pets. Now on my turn, pets all activate and do their stuff. And then I do, um, you know, long range missile, attack three, range five. And that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I can see a world where you take like the rapid fire machine gun bolter um, and you play a more passive, as you said, shepherd's a really good kind of term for it to just have four or five pets out, make sure they all stay alive. You transfer between them only when you need to save them. Uh, but then you take long range missiles, you, you know, you use the high impact projectiles, you use your range attacks to that's your attacks. When you don't want to summon something, you're doing these and then you cycle through, Yeah, you know, because with three or four pets out, you can then fill the other two turns with range attacks yep. um, and maybe a heal. And that that's your turn. That's your cycle. Yeah. And there uh, will probably be more cards in the future that would enhance that play style. 
because mm. most of them will have two or you know at least two distinct ways of playing it. Um, I can see a world where this one though you can literally blur those lines and um, quite effectively potentially do both. I, I, I don't know. We'll um, have to wait and see what you do with it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because I, I feel like I feel like the next couple of levels, I can I can see some spicy attack cards coming. Yeah. Right? Because there's a couple, you know, attack all around you, attack a couple of times, things like that. But there's nothing really like, you know, oh, you want to get in there right away. But I feel like that's got to be coming. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's also no lost cards. Like, there's no, You're no right. like, nukes. Yeah. There's no you know, tack everything around you for five, uh, you know, burn the card. Um, and m- maybe because of all the pets, but, you know, some of those big, big attacks. So, yeah. Yeah, well, awesome. Um, so, yeah, we get to see exactly where this goes um, when we bust out the old prison. What's it called again? Unfettered what? Five. Unfettered hive. hive. Yeah, Which yeah, okay. makes sense now, right? Like, you yeah. are the, yeah, so. Yeah, you're the queen. Cool. I am the queen. <laughs> yeah, All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Gaz finally got it. So yeah, let's just sit back and watch his brain melt and um, we'll report back on a regular episode of the pod. Excellent. All right. Catch you later. Bye-bye.